Sometimes people with dementia can have behaviors that are very difficult for the care provider to deal with. Sometimes those behaviors might just be frustrating, but sometimes they can be dangerous for the person with dementia or other residents or the care providers. One major message to always keep in mind when dealing with difficult behaviors is that all behavior has meaning. People with dementia are often unable to communicate their feelings and their needs in the ways that you and I can. Sometimes they know what's upsetting them but have trouble getting the message to us. Sometimes they can't even understand themselves what's upsetting them, they just know something isn't right. But if we understand that behavior is a way to communicate, and all communication has meaning, then it becomes our job to use our detective and problem solving skills and set about the business of figuring it out. These are a few of the behaviors that you might have encountered. It's important to determine what behaviors need intervention. You will want to make behaviors that are a safety risk your highest priority and then consider client distress as well. If the problem is a function of lifelong personality traits or is just annoying to staff, these might be issues better dealt with by changing staff reaction to the behavior. The ABC framework can help to guide you as you try to figure out why a person is responding in the way that they are. The A stands for antecedent. The antecedent is the trigger or the thing that caused the person to react the way that they did. The good news is that there's always an antecedent, but the bad news is that sometimes it's very difficult to identify. The trigger might be a person, a place, a smell, a look, something they hear, or much more. If we do find it though, it gives us something to change that could prevent the behavior. B is for behavior. It's important that we clearly identify and describe the behavior that we're trying to resolve and focus on only one behavior at a time. This is why determining your priorities was so important. C is the consequence. This is where we look at what we and others did as a response to the behavior and ask ourselves, did our response help or did we make it worse? Sometimes figuring out the antecedent can be done by using a simple tool like the DOS. The Dementia Observational System is a behavior frequency tool. The DOS tool is used to assess a person's behavior over a 24-hour cycle for up to seven days to determine the occurrence, frequency, and duration of behaviors of concern. The DOS can help caregivers begin to determine reasons for behaviors by looking at trends. If, for example, you notice that a behavior happens at a certain time of day, this would help you to focus in on what happens at that time of day to find the antecedent. To use the DOS, start by filling out in detail the behavior you're tracking. Do not use vague terms such as verbal or physical aggression. Instead, use terms that are descriptive so that everyone tracking the behavior understands exactly what they're looking for. Some examples would be spitting, slapping, punching, kicking, and so on. Throughout the week, record behaviors of concern on the progress notes using well-defined neutral terms. Include in these notes what behavior was observed, where did the behavior occur, what was happening just before the behavior occurred, what interventions were used, and how did the resident respond. After seven days of monitoring, the team should get together and discuss the findings to see if they can identify trends or possible causes for the behavior. This is an example of what a completed DOS might look like. The color coding helps you to see trends throughout the week. It's important that you do not include too many behaviors in this chart or it will become impossible to interpret. It is helpful to include codes that reflect awake, calm and sleeping times to show a good snapshot of the contrast in the day as they have here. It's also important to make sure that this is being done for only a short period of time and not indefinitely. The intent is to track behaviors for several days and then analyze for findings. Tracking too many behaviors for too long will make this a pointless endeavor. Another tool that could be used when trying to problem solve around difficult behaviors is the behavior map. The behavior mapping tool goes further than the DOS in that it requires you to actually write down the details of what was happening at the time of the behavior, what your responses were, and how they worked. It encourages the analysis of the situation on an ongoing basis and not just tracking what the person is doing. Again, clearly defining the behavior being monitored is essential. In this case, we've defined the physical behavior as striking out with hands. To further define the codes, we've expanded the definition to say that a mild or level 2 is swatting in the air or making a fist, a moderate or level 3 problem is making physical contact and redirected by one person, and a severe or level 4 is hitting, grabbing or punching requiring more than one person to redirect. In this example, you see that Mr. Smith was sleeping until 5 o'clock 
and then when the staff person tried to lead him to the bathroom, he struck out and hit them. The worker stood back and provided space, and Mr. Smith calmed down. No problems were documented again until three o'clock, when a worker touched his shoulder to get his attention, and he hit and grabbed. Despite the worker telling him not to hit, he continued to swat and yell, and the worker needed someone else to assist with redirecting. At bedtime, there was another episode of hitting, when the worker tried to get the pajama top on. This time, the worker apologized for upsetting him and gave him space. He ultimately refused to put on his pajamas, but he did calm down. Looking at this chart, can you see any possible trends? What might be a trigger for this man? What responses helped? Which ones did not? Once you've collected data for a few days, you can take a look at the information and see if you can identify any trends. This can also provide you with a starting point for problem solving what issues might lie under the surface. In this small example, it looks like staff touching Mr. Smith's arm might be a trigger. This is a good start, and now you can look a little deeper. Why does touching his arm make him defensive? Does he have pain in his arms? Are staff coming up and grabbing him without him knowing that they are there? Does he feel like his independence is being threatened? These questions lead you to the next questions about what staff can try differently. In the examples provided, the confrontational response of telling him not to hit did not help the situation at all. Although we know it's not good to hit, this response is not helpful in this situation. Maybe he feels like staff are attacking him, and telling him that he shouldn't hit keeps him on the defense. Backing off seems to help. Maybe an approach where staff explain what they're doing before touching him would be helpful. Maybe he has arthritis in his shoulder that's acting up. Maybe a button-up PJ top would be less painful to apply. Maybe he needs some Tylenol. These are the kinds of questions that you can ask when the staff put their heads together to try and problem solve on new care planning methods. An alternate version of the behavior mapping form is this one. This form would be better for behaviors that do not happen multiple times a day. The times are replaced by a date-time column. This would allow for several days to be on one form and removes the need for hourly charting. The analysis and problem solving for the care plan would be the same. Once you have a better picture of what's happening around a difficult behavior, the hard work begins. Care planning and problem solving are likely to require team collaboration, input from families, creativity and a little detective work. Staff must have a good understanding of dementia care principles and approaches. Some resources that are available to you are your staff who have already received dementia care training, the WRHA Long-Term Care Program's ongoing dementia education initiatives, the Long-Term Care Program's clinical nurse specialists, and the geriatric mental health team.